Well, hello there, it's Stephen here with iPhotography, and today I've got a little tutorial for you Affinity Photo users to learn all about focus stacking. So if you're looking to get super nice clean shots, here's a really easy way to do it. Let's get started. Okay, so what you need to do first is a little bit of work in your photography prior to actually coming into Affinity. You know, focus stacking, you can't really do that just with one image. You need to purposely take three particular images. It may be more than three. I find three is kind of quite a comfortable area. Um, but what we're looking at doing in each of those three images is to take a picture where the foreground is in focus and then it's to take another one exactly the same but this time set the focus in the middle of the picture and then another one at the back. So it depends on your actual scene as to what objects or elements you can focus on but you can see that I've got three here. So my first picture has just got a little bit of this bollard uh, that's in focus and then the stirs and the building in the background are blurred. Now the next one here, slightly a bit different. The foreground is now blurred. The mid here of the stirs is sharper and the building, it's a little bit sharper, but not still uh, 100%. So that's why I've taken another shot of the background where that is in focus and the foreground and the mid are blurred. So now it's a case of stacking those three layers or these three images to become three layers on top of each other. And then effectively we're gonna be masking out the parts that are blurred. So all we're getting is the sharp elements. Now the really key to this is to try and take three images that are perfectly aligned and they, they literally will drop one on top of another and you don't have to make any tweaks. Now that's easier said than done sometimes depending upon what you're shooting and um, using a tripod is really really helpful in that instance but you'll see mines are, are pretty good they're not absolutely perfect so there are some adjustments needed so let's get into the actual uh, creation of this stacking here. So what we're going to do you just need to choose an image first to begin as your background layer so I'll just start off with my back I've labeled each of them so I know where the focus is on each of the three shots then I'm going to take the next shot and I'm going to basically place that on top of it. So in Infinity, all you need to do is simply press Control. Now this will be Command on a Mac. Uh, so, um, so in Infinity, all you need to do is basically press Control and C, which is Copy. That will be Command and C on a Mac. So I'm going to do Control and C. Um, so we've made a copy of our mid layer, and then we're going to do Control and V, which is Paste or Command and V. Um, and paste that onto the background. Same again with the foreground front image. So we're gonna do Control and C. And then again, just go to our back layer and Control and V. You can then close down the other tabs if you wanted to, it just makes it a little bit easier. So then we've got our layers panel. If I just bring that over and you can see we've got three versions. Now they're all labeled background, which is not very helpful. Sometimes it's more important to know obviously which ones are the fore, the mid and the background. So just relabel them if it helps you. By just double clicking on each layer, I find by turning them off and using the little um, tick icon at the side here, you know exactly which ones um, you're looking at here. So I'm just gonna label that one again. Actually it was background. This next one though is the mid. So I'll call it the midground, or you can call it the stirs, and then this is the front. So I know where my focus point is on each of these layers. So just to make it easier, because we're going to start off with the background, I'm going to turn on our mid, because now what we want to actually do is get rid of any of the blurred areas, anything that's kind of out of focus here. But before we get into anything to do with masking and, and painting and actually erasing parts of the image, um, it's also important to, as I was saying, make sure that these images are aligned as best as possible. So just do it one at a time. So if you've always got your background layer uh, turned on, then I'm gonna go to my mid and just gonna reduce the opacity and we can actually see how severe, how far off I am in terms of my alignment. So you can see, yeah, it, it's not kind of perfect, um, but if I can try and actually then size this layer, without really distorting too much of the original shot. You get these initial anchor keys on Affinity and you can kind of help yourself move around a little bit. Now, knowing that the fact that my midground is all I want to be sharp in here, so it's basically the stirs, I'm just trying to get that area lined up. So it doesn't matter too much if it throws out um, the background a little bit or anything maybe to do with this foreground pillar, because that's only the area that I want so I'm actually just going to squeeze this shot a little bit more and basically make sure it's to the best of my ability that each of these layers are aligned with the background one. That way it's going to make it so much easier when we start masking that we're not going to have areas of duplication or areas of blur. So we've got that one lined up there I think pretty well. So we'll just restore the opacity to 100% there. 
Uh, now again, we're going to use the top layer here, the front one, and we're going to reduce the opacity there about 40% or so it was before. So now again, all I'm looking for is this bollard at the front here to be lined up. So that's actually pretty good. So I was semi-successful on that third shot there, not so much with the middle one. By the way, once you're done with it, we're just going to restore opacity to 100%. So you can see at the top we've got lines where the layers are showing one over another, but that's not a problem because this is what we're going to do now is actually use a, a mask, a layer mask. If you've ever used Photoshop before, you'll see how similar it is in Affinity. So to do so, we all we need again is our layers panel here. We're going to select uh, we're going to just deselect the uh, front layer to begin with, so we're going to hide that front. We're going to select our mid layer and then press the layer mask. Okay, so that's given us a mask there. And if, again, if you've ever used Photoshop before or you've used layer masks before, you know all you'll need is a black brush. So we get our black brush, we select it in the color panels at the side. Over on the left hand side, we'll select our actual brush tool, or you can press B on the keyboard. So it's kind of a good idea to kind of zoom in a little bit closer. And now simply all we're looking to do is making sure that we've got our mask layer selected on our mid and we're just going to start brushing that away. So you can make your brush larger or smaller depending upon how intricate the work is. And all we're looking to do is actually retain the sharpness of the mid layer. So the mid layer was about the stirs. So that's all I really want to kind of appear in the image. You can see there's differences in the exposure uh, between the background and the foreground. So that may have been down to how my exposure settings were. But again, that's not too much of an issue really, considering A, without focus upon focusing, but then also we can kind of change that a little bit with some um, brightness or adjustment layers a little bit later on. And you can also turn down the flow, especially the hardness when you get to some edges at the top here. It just makes it a little bit easier that you don't have these sharp, heavy lines that kind of show off where you've been doing your editing. So just coming back out now, zoom in a little bit further. Now we've got our background that's a little bit clearer with that um, building in the background. It's nice and sharp. So we're gonna skip from the mid ground and we're going to go to the foreground now. So we need to turn that layer back on. We can just uh, minimize that layer. And now again, we just simply as we did before, just need to add a new layer mask to our foreground. And so what we're looking to do now is to get rid of any of the blurred areas on this layer, which is effectively everything that's not this bollard at the front. So it's and as you can see, all the sharpness is now coming back in from the previous two layers. Those stirs are becoming sharper. The building at the back was sharper. Now I may just have to make my brush a little bit smaller. And I start getting really close into this bollard here. Let's move our layers panel out of the way. And we're going to make it a little smoother. It's quite therapeutic, I find. <laughs> so we're just going to go around the bollard edge a little bit more slowly, make the brush head a bit smaller each time. So there we go. So we've got all three aspects set and ready. I'll turn on, make sure all our layer masks are on and everything is visible. And now we've got that clear foreground to background focus. As I said, there's a line down the side here, um, just where the images didn't align perfectly, but that's not an issue. What we need to do is then take our crop tool. You can find that on the sidebar. And I'm just gonna bring it in a little bit more, make sure it doesn't mess with the composition too much. We've got this nice runner, uh, this nice bollard on that vertical thirds. Our upper thirds pretty much almost hits the top of the stirs there. We can be a little bit more along the lines of composition and make it a bit tighter and then just press apply when you're ready. And that, and that takes care of the issue there. But ultimately what we were looking to do is achieve that foreground to background focus. So let's have a look at that now. So we've got a nice clear bollard at the front. The stirs are nice and clean and the building at the background is nice and clean. So we are looking fantastic. So that's just a really quick and simple way of doing focus stacking in Affinity. I hope you've enjoyed it. Keep looking out for iPhotography for more. Thanks for watching.